For centuries, the tatami has been the neutral proving ground for settling long-standing disputes. And on March 26th, history will repeat. From humble beginnings, no one could have predicted the type of powerhouse submission artist that Gordon Ryan would turn into. But for the last five years, Gordon's ascension from a complete unknown to the world's most dominant grappler has been nothing short of historic. With an 80% submission rate, Gordon's skills as a grappler have surged past his rivals. Not only in his weight class, but he currently sits atop the pound for pound rankings. After knocking off some of the most elite competitors in the sport, those seeking to unseat the king have all fallen silent. That is, until Wagner Hosha raised his hand. Known as one of the most physical and aggressive grapplers in the game, Wagner Hocha has never and will never back down from a challenge. At 38 years old, the legendary fight sports black belt has reinvented himself, moving up in weight and taking out the legends of grappling along the way. Now, with his sights set on that number one pound for pound spot, Wagner Hocha is ready to knock the king off his throne. As with any Gordon Ryan match, the animosity runs deep. Their history as two of the best have set them on a collision course that cannot be diverted. And on March 26th, when the lights come up in Austin, Texas, everything will be settled once and for all. This is the story of experience versus youth, brute force versus exquisite technique, legacy versus the future. To answer the age old question, This is the road to who's number one. Wagner Hocha versus Gordon Ryan. Over 2,000 miles south of New Jersey, Gordon Ryan and the rest of the Danaher Death Squad have all relocated to the beautiful tropical island of Puerto Rico. One good thing about Puerto Rico too is that if you have a New Jersey or a, a, a mainland driver's license, they can't, you can't get in trouble at all, pretty much. Like, they can only fine you, but points don't carry over. So you, you can get caught doing like 200 miles an hour and they can only give you a ticket. However, while adjusting to the laid back lifestyle, 26 year old Gordon Ryan still prides himself as the hardest worker in the game. I'm Gordon Ryan greatest of all time, as far as uh, nuggy submission grappling goes. Um, a black belt down there, John Danaher, Gary Tonin, um, formerly training in New York City at Hendrick Gracie Academy and now training here in Puerto Rico. While the island has become a welcome change to life on the East Coast, the move did not come out of convenience. I never liked New York at all, pre-COVID. Everyone's so uptight in New York, everyone's miserable and complaining. And I like nature, I like beaches. I don't get to enjoy it much because I'm always training. I mean, I wake up, I lift weights, I go to training, I come home, I eat, and I was doing that in New Jersey and I'm gonna do it now in Puerto Rico. Okay, fellas, we've got a different format today, all sessions. All sparring sessions today will be seated versus standing. Under the tutelage and guidance of longtime coach John Danaher, the mission always remains the same. Submit the men in front of you. But as their bond grows, so does the technique. Along with their dominance comes unintended consequences. That's it. Now you're ready. Now you're going to beat his arm, get outside his arm. It seems like Gordon is having a hard time finding opponents to uh, yeah. compete against him. Why is that? Um, it's uh, it's going to be hard for most people in a no-gi setting under almost any rule set to, to beat Gordon or even be competitive. A lot of people just, especially at the upper echelons of the sport, are just very reluctant to take a match. They'll say they want a match, but then when it's time to sign the dotted line, they, what they say publicly and what they do privately are two different things. 
So yeah, it, it can be frustrating. I know Gordon gets frustrated about this as to why it happens. Um, I guess you would have to ask the people that won't sign the contract. Um, at this point, even if you just did well against Gordon, that would be big for your brand. You know, if you just survived or got to the end of the match, that would be significant. But Gordon's confidence has not wavered despite many of his adversaries refusing to take a match with him. Um, well, you know, Cyborg wanted to fight at who's number one, but wanted to do ADCC rules, which number one doesn't make sense because who's number one is a tournament that's based around submission only. I mean, we already did that and I submitted them and under two minutes. Doesn't really make sense to me, but that's what that's what's going on with Cyborg. Gordon Ryan. Lucas Barboza just calls me out online thinking he's smart and just gets tooled in the comments every single time. He agrees to fight me on social media and then when Flo actually sends the contract and the date, he just goes, no, I'm not doing that and doesn't give a reason why. Herbert, same thing. Felipe, same thing. Felipe was trying to just change the rules. Not even interested really in fighting him anymore besides at ADCC because he's just the worst guy ever to negotiate with. Victor Hugo was calling me out for a while and then uh, declined another time when we match and I just tooled him online and called him out about that and he's been quiet ever since. Literally anybody I would love to compete against. There's no other athlete in the history of the sport that has competed and won consistently at the highest levels in more rule sets than me. If you guys are confident that you can actually do submissions, which is the whole goal of jiu-jitsu, there should be no problem fighting 30 minutes thinking that you can submit me. Thankfully, there are some athletes who, who, who long to compete against the best, and they're still out there. And uh, like, you know, I, I really admire people like Wagner Rocha who just fearlessly go out and I say, you know, I want to fight this guy, and uh, he's, he's good, I'm good, let's go. You have to respect him for agreeing to the match, but at the same time, it's going to be, it's going to be a rough night for him. A thousand miles north on the southern tip of Florida, Wagner Hocha remains unfazed by all the trash talk and high stakes. From UFC to ADCC, there isn't much that can rattle the fight sports black belt. Hey, tick, 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 tick. We're in South Beach. Near the harbor, uh, where all the boats leave, uh, we do a lot of our uh, fight sports team training here. You know, to kind of share jujitsu with the community. You know, people are walking their animals and hanging out and doing yoga, and uh, it's just trying to set the vibe for the world to see. You know, you know, South Florida is a, a hub for jujitsu and, uh, and and just one of the most beautiful spots in the world. Hey, Pepper, hey. <laughs> we have tremendous amount of talent in our area. You know, and. Um, just blessed to be able to live this paradise. This is all year round too, this weather. You guys that live in the cold and the snow, we don't see any of that. <laughs> you know, problem is in the gyms, is a lot of, bah, you know, a lot of hard training, hard, hard movement. This is a good way to to let the game go, share technique and, and uh, you know, and have those moments where it's not just about pojada, you know? You know, learning and, uh, Experience, you know, experience is the key. One, two, three, five, five, five. Hey! However, when it is time for Pohada, there is no one more ready than the battle tested veteran. Making his Who's Number One debut on three days' notice, Wagner Hocha didn't think twice about taking on the bigger and younger Ronaldo Jr. Wow, they are really giving our referee team a lot of work here. To the wrestling face. Now we see Ronaldo on bottom for the first time in this match. A nice little twist on the knee as well there from Wagner Hocha. The heel is exposed, but still, that is a valid attack. And well, let's see exactly what happens here because we're going to go to a decision. Your winner is a decision. Now the corner, But he didn't stop there. This time, with a full training camp, Wagner again proved the doubters wrong. When he called out the ADCC standout, John Blank. Wagner is the veteran at 38. I don't know about you, but I feel like he's only been getting better these last years. Wow, look at that. Could be a chance. Now Wagner that's... diving in. Beautiful, Beautiful change of direction. There is the end Beautiful. of the match in favor of Wagner Hosha. I'd like to face anybody in the top three of any weight class. I don't run for matches, and so these 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 fights for me is it's just bonuses, you know. As long as I keep doing this, and I can keep chasing my dream of uh, being one of the best in the world, you know, that's that's it.
Meanwhile, back in Puerto Rico, the king still keeps up a rigorous weightlifting regimen. Uh, at 7 a.m. in my garage, in the court's garage, and uh, we're getting ready to lift. So we're gonna lift, I'm probably gonna shower, eat something, we'll head to training, we'll start MMA at around nine o'clock, uh, we'll do jiu-jitsu around 11, and then after that we'll be finished for the day to do whatever we want. Although Gordon Ryan dominates the competition mats, he isn't immune to real life adversity. The recent passing of his father is never far from his mind. He was a character, he's like your your typical, like, you know, I grew up in the 60s and 70s, like, you know, tough guy. Probably the best relationship someone could have had with their dad. At any given point in his life, he just 100% thought that if I got into a fight with him, he would just hit me with one good shot and knock me out. Like, you're just your typical fucking 70s tough guy. You know, very personable, everybody loved him. Of course, losing a best friend is never, is never easy, losing a dad is never easy. But at the end of the day, I mean, the world doesn't care about you, the world doesn't feel sorry for you. So it's probably the longest I haven't been on the mat in my entire career. My mom came and I spent you know, a week with her just to, you know, be with her. And then, you know, after she left, it was like five days or so. And I was like, okay, well, now just go back to lifting, go back to training and do the shit you have to do. And if my dad looked at me and he saw me like not going to training because I was sad that he died, he would like call me a fucking pussy. He'd be like, what are you doing? Like, get back to training and do your shit. Now, preparing for Wagner Hocha, Gordon has never been more focused. Whether in New York or Puerto Rico, training with the Danaher Death Squad is some of the toughest in the world. Well done, very good. Yeah, so uh, shockingly enough, I'm gonna be competing against Wagner, Wagner Hosha. Uh, now I know what everyone's gonna say, oh, Gordon only competes against people smaller than him and this and that, and Wagner's 40, blah, blah, blah. First of all, him being older than me, like I stated, is a, is, a, is a big advantage for him. He has a ton more experience competing and doing jiu-jitsu than I do. In addition, I literally cannot find a single person my own weight or heavier than me to actually agree to fight me. If I have to fight a blue belt, I fight a blue belt. I just want to compete as much as I can and stay active before you know the big tournaments, ADCC, and some of the bigger events that come up. You got to give it to to, to Wagner. He was one of the toughest guys in, in the entire jiu-jitsu scene. It's always just an incredibly tough physical battle whenever you go up against uh, Wagner Rocha. He's one of those guys who knows how to compete, knows how to get the win. And uh, a guy like that, you can never discount. Yeah. Wagner had a lot of fun assaulting me and abusing me when I was a young kid. Like he used to just come over and like smack my crown off my head or like take it and wear it. And he was like talking shit to me with Marcel Gonclaves at the backstage at EBI one time. So now when we compete, I'm not even gonna, not even gonna submit him early on in the match. I'm just gonna traumatize him for like the majority of the match and then just submit him once he's absolutely exhausted. It's just gonna be an embarrassing, embarrassing time for Wagner. So you have to respect him for agreeing to the match, but at the same time, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a rough night for him. Martial arts has always been a driving force in Wagner's life. Once himself a brash young man looking to prove his worth at all costs, the Wagner we see here today is a different man. Now he spends most of his time teaching the sport he fell in love with to his family and community. My life is great. Um, easy. Easy peasy, you know. I get uh, to wake up, train jujitsu, uh, spend time with my family, you know. I get to watch my kids grow up, you know. I get to share the knowledge with people that uh, want to be like, like myself and others that are, you know, living through jujitsu. For me, life is, is nothing but a huge blessing, and uh, and I'm, you know, gifted to be able to to do the things I love and to be able to put in positions like this to do you know, to do things that uh, only people dream of. All right, guys, let's start off with a little drill, a little wrestling drill, always doing this stuff. Down as he goes up. Boom. Look at my body. I'm sitting heavy here. Although a family man at heart, 
when Wagner steps onto the mat. He has no problem tapping into the primal nature of fighting. My name is Jasmine Rocha. Um, my dad is Wagner Rocha. He's uh, pretty well known in the jiu-jitsu community for being a little, a little rough, you know, but he, he's a really nice guy on the outside of all that, you know? He's, uh, he's a great dad, a great coach as well. It's really funny, because like on the stage, he's like a completely different guy. Everybody must assume that he's like, he's a jerk or something, but like off stage, he's a really nice guy. He's probably one of the nicest guys on the mat, always. He's always looking out for other people, always trying to help other people, you know? His smile is constant, though. That smile on stage is a smile off stage while he's teaching, while he's, anything he's doing, he has that smile. Well, what did you think when you first heard about the match? I think definitely it will test my dad a lot to see whatever my dad's game plan is and to see how well prepared he is for this fight, which I do think he's prepared. I always think he's prepared, you know? He's my dad, I'm a little biased, of course, but I, I think it is gonna push him and it's gonna test him a lot. Guys, good class here. As you guys notice, we have our film crew in here today. Phil Rappin's in the house with us over right here. This is in the lead up to my match that's happening on March 26th with Gordon Ryan. If you guys are not aware. There's enough keyboard warriors out there and none of us at VRMA or Fight Sports need to be one of those. So again, we don't need that. Don't be that. I ask you, don't go out there and try to defend me because I don't need defending. All right? Love you guys, thank you. I love Who's Number One because uh, it's, uh, it's a spotlight to prove yourself in front of uh, the jiu-jitsu world. I love competition. You know, for me, uh, competing is, uh, is a trait that uh, I feel will always make you better no matter the result. And you go out there and you, you put yourself out there, you put your heart on the line and you go forward and you, you're always going to learn something from it, you know? So for me, it's the dream. Gordon is a person on the internet that um, he engages people with his comments, he engages people with his tactics. But Gordon himself, he's, he's taking this, this route where he's attacking people and trying to boost himself when in reality his work is showing for itself. You know, he doesn't need to tell nobody he's the best, his work is showing that he is the best. My relationship with Gordon isn't, we're not friends, we're not close, but I've told him to his face that I think he, you know, he's great and that one day he'll be one of the best in the world. I think he thrives on people wanting to see him lose. I love his walk down and here it is the finish. He's found a niche and, uh, and the reason why Jiu Jitsu is so popular is because people thrive on hate. You know, it's hate. There's no love in that. What to say? What to say? You can win all these titles in the world, but he, he does things that I don't understand. I feel like you should bring light to the world, not darkness, you know? Gordon, I don't know what impression you have of me in your mind, um, what you think I've done to you that's bothered you. I'm sorry for knocking the crown off your head. I didn't know it bothered you so much. Um, I did it. It was wrong. And uh, it is what it is, man. It's time. We move on. Life goes on. But um, I tell you right here, right now, that um, I am sorry for anything that I've offended you with. You know, March 26, expect me to be 100% ready. You know, if you win, I'm going to applaud you. If I win, I'm going to shake your hand. No matter the result, I feel like we have a bigger responsibility uh, inside jiu-jitsu and I think um, you should look deep inside yourself and analyze the decisions of the things you're making and how the future of the sport will be but being a dad I know how proud your dad was of you so you should consider the future of the sport 
the children that are watching you and the examples you're setting. Just because you're creating good jiu-jitsu doesn't mean you're doing good. You can do better. It's impossible to overstate how valuable a win over Gordon would be. Shutting up the biggest trash talker in grappling may be even sweeter than the victory itself. I actually don't even want to wear something this big, but just because it'll piss off the haters, I had to get one made. Yes, it's real gold. I have a couple, I should probably just put all three in here, but um, then it'll be a little bit too much, you know? I know that I'm better than these guys, the fans, and even the haters know that I'm better than these guys. Uh, so what I want for the fans is just for them to watch and to study good actual jujitsu. So my whole goal when I go out is to give the fans something to study so they can go back and watch all the stuff that I've been teaching them on tape in real time against a high level guy. For Gordon, this is two matches. The first is against Wagner, who's just always a very tough, uh, resilient opponent. Uh, and there's also the fight against himself. Like, am I getting better? Is the Gordon Ryan of 2021 better than the Gordon of 2017? It's not just about beating your opponents, it's about beating your previous manifestations of yourself. And that's a large part of Gordon's motivation for this match. I'm not gonna antagonize Gordon. I'm not gonna poke at him. You know, that's not what I wanna do. I wanna fight him. I wanna get a chance to fight the best in the world. I wanna go there and do my best. And if I win, I win. And if I don't, I don't. At the end of the day, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be satisfied with my life. To me, it's a, it's a competition, you know? If I get to fight the best guy in the world on the biggest stage in the world, I'm winning. Whether I go out there, I win or lose, I'm already a champion. Either he's stupid or he's broke. And uh, you know, he seems pretty intelligent with the way that he, the way that he talks, he's not that dumb. So he must just be, uh, he must be hurting for money. Either way, I'm just going to exhaust him to a point where he just can't move. And then when I get bored of doing that and I wanna go home, then I'll finally finish him. I'm at the best I've ever been in my life right now. Mentally, physically, spiritually, I can see a better, you know, a better opportunity, better timing, better everything. You know, this is just it. You know, this is right. It's the pinnacle. To me, it's it's important that I, I try to continue to showcase this and uh, hopefully teach others along the way to do the same thing. To be the, that kind of ambassador to what jujitsu needs. On paper, Gordon and Wagner couldn't be more different. Both are clearly at a different stage in their lives and careers but their ambition and strong appetite for competition has linked them together. For Gordon, it's not enough to be number one until he has dominated all comers, and he will not be satisfied until he has emphatically proved every last doubter wrong. For Wagner, this is the culmination of a life's work, a chance to unseat the king and finally sit atop the throne, a chance to show his family that hard work pays off. Coming, boys. I'm coming. On March 26th, both men will step onto the mat. All the words, all the bluster gets left at the door, and all that's left are the two best grapplers in the world vying for a chance to be number one. Watch it all unfold live right here on Flow Grappling. <laughs>